Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's video, we are going to talk about watercolors. And this is an intro course for first time and beginner painters uh, wanting to try watercolors. So what you're going to see in the description box below, there's a link to a supply kit. And those are just generally recommended supplies um, that I recommend for watercolors. If you already have watercolors at home, please utilize the tools that you have so you don't have to purchase new stuff um, until you're ready or until you want to. Um, but utilize what you have at home. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my uh, first time painters to transfer the image onto your canvas or onto your paper before you start painting. And um, it's just a nice way so you can focus more on painting and less on drawing. Though I do recommend that you practice your drawing skills, it just helps you get better. So check out uh, the link to the traceable and there's also going to be a video on how to transfer your traceable to your paper. So check out both of those. And like I said before, this is an intro course to watercolors and the only way that you get better is with more practice. So please practice, paint this multiple times. You will find that with watercolors, you can paint the exact same image four or five times and each one of your paintings is gonna be a little bit different and you're gonna learn something from each one of those. So watercolor paper is not expensive, as expensive as uh, canvas. So you can actually go through a little bit more with the watercolor paper. So please practice, practice, practice. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into, into today's subject matter. All right, guys, this is gonna be another fun watercolor painting. So grab your supplies, utilize what you have. Um, for this video, you'll see a link in the description box for the specific colors that I use, but you don't have to go out and get that specific set. So use what you have that's in the general area for the color I'll be using. All right, so once you transfer your traceable to your watercolor paper, we're going to start with water, and I want you to be very generous with the amount of water. And we're basically doing this in the background, so we're going around the perimeter of the peacock and around the perimeter of um, the little eye part of the feathers. And do, like I said, be very generous with the amount of water. And we're gonna be throwing a few colors of pigment in here and just kind of watching it bleed into the water. Now, when you're working with watercolor, you're also gonna be working with saturation. And lots of water and a little bit of pigment is low saturation. Um, no water and a lot of pigment is gonna be super high saturation. So you'll be playing with that. And just the more that you play, the more you'll kind of uh, visually understand how it's working. So here you can see where I took the green and the yellow and just kind of basically put them in random spots and just watch how the water just diffuses it and it bleeds. And this new color that we're putting on here, I have it on my plate, but it would be green with a little bit of black if you have a more simplified watercolor plate. And once you get these colors on here, feel free to pick up your board, move it around. Um, you can even go in with more water with the brush right here, kind of control a little bit. A lot of watercolors is your observation getting comfortable with learning to slightly control water, but also kind of play with what they call it, what Bob Ross called the happy accidents. Um, and I would say you have a lot more happy accidents in watercolors than you do in many of your other mediums. And this is where you just get to kind of play and go, what's this gonna do? Let's try this color. How is this gonna mix together? And each time that you do that, your brain is taking on that information of what those colors look like, what that pigment looks like based on how much water you have. So it is important to just play. Now, as we move into the peacock, um, kind of those back feathers, we used a good amount of water and that light green. And again, the more amount of water in there, the lighter the color is gonna be. Here, I'm grabbing more direct pigment um, and just placing it into the already wet surface. And again, like the background, it's gonna diffuse a little bit. So play, have fun, and um, just kind of, observe how the color changes based on gravity. If your paper's starting to warp because you don't have the edges taped, that's gonna affect the direction that the pigment goes. So there's a lot of variables in watercolor and the more observant you can be about seeing those, uh, the more you could just kind of play and have fun. 
All right, so you saw the place to pause the video and take your progress photo. And again, doing the exact same thing. We're filling the uh, head of the peacock with water. And then we're gonna go in with our um, very rich ultramarine blue or whatever blue you have on your plate. Now, if you need to switch to a smaller brush, go right ahead. You wanna make sure that there's no water on the eye, on the beak, or that kind of um, what's gonna be a white spot on the side of the head. And here you can see where I grabbed that blue pigment and it was rather diffused. There you go, and you can see where I grabbed it just from the cake. The first place I put my brush, that's gonna be your most saturation, your darkest pigment, your um, highest saturation. So again, as you play with watercolors, when you pick up the pigment, that's gonna be your darkest mark for that section, and then it starts to diffuse as you um, place your brush in other areas and get rid of the pigment on your brush. So again, that was probably quite a bit. Just play with this, um, observe how the color blends, observe how gravity affects it, and how colors look when they do meld together. And if you haven't taken a deep breath, make sure you breathe, relax. I do encourage for watercolors to paint the same image a couple of times. Each image is gonna be a little bit different and you're gonna put what you learned from the first one or the prior watercolor into your next one and just keep building your skills. And this is something that only gets better with practice. And hopefully while you're painting, you just kind of escape the world for a little bit. That is one of the best benefits and aspects about painting. And hopefully for aside, aside from um, watching this video on a tablet or computer screen or TV, uh, you're not really engaging with an electronic device or uh, social media platforms, aside from YouTube to watch this. <laughs> All right, so again, you can see where I took that blue, a uh, good amount of diffused water in there, so kind of a medium blue for the eye parts of the feather. And now we're moving into purple. We're gonna make that blue darker. So like I mentioned earlier, just observe how the colors mix together. And as you're watching the video, um, Observe the general place that I put each color and the shape that it kind of makes. Again, it's gonna vary with yours, um, but just kind of observe where it's going. So on the beak, I laid the base of water as well and got a little bit of medium gray or a light gray to kind of get the shading on there. And if you ever need to take something off the page, you can take a dry brush and absorb the water if you need to remove something from watercolors. Don't feel like you only have to add to, you can remove. All right, another place to pause the video, take your progress photo, and I recommend fully letting this dry before you do your outline. And in the video, I am using an India ink brush pen. There is a link in the description box for the supply kit, and that is in there. It's very affordable, um, and you can get them at most of your craft stores. You can also use a pointy brush and black paint. You can use your black watercolor paint. Just remember to reload your brush very often so that way you have a more pure black pigment. You can also use gouache or even um, acrylic paint for your black on here. And that will give you a bit more uh, saturation and intensity of coverage compared to watercolor pigment. So your call if you wanna switch it up. All right, and moving in, we're gonna be filling in, just kind of giving an impression of all the texture on the uh, butt of our peacock and then going in for the feathers. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be in the exact placement that I put these, but just look for the general area and the general shapes and the lines that I'm making. All right, another good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna fill in with a few more colors. So we're gonna go for a light green, and that's a lot of water with that green. And filling in the rest of those flowers, and then we're gonna put some yellow on top of it. Um, I forgot how speedy this part was. Please do not keep up with the speed of the video. Take your time and pause the video as needed. And here, just taking some of that raw sienna, throwing it in on top of the yellow, but it's more um, important on the texture for the feathers on the butt of the peacock. All right, so now we're moving into teal. And if you don't have teal, you can use purple or blue. And we're gonna be making quite a few little marks. 
So like I said before, I want you to use your brush kind of like a pencil and use just the tip of the brush um, as you create these skinny lines. Now the brush that I'm using here, it's called a rigger brush or a liner brush. And the bristles are about two to three inches long. Um, and it does take a little bit of practice to get used to, but it is kind of a nice, fun brush. So if you end up picking one up, just kind of play with it. And this would be a really good um, watercolor painting to do with it. Now, as you're making all these lines and filling in the space, I do want you overlapping your lines. Um, I want you to have a full, thick, uh, healthy peacock here. And it's okay if the feather lines overlap for on the feather lines next to it. So um, don't be afraid to do that. So I did pick up the larger brush and using that same teal, adding some shadows here. Again, pause the video and use your power of observation to see where we're placing it. And for the forehead on the peacock, we're actually grabbing the pigment direct from the cake, very high saturation, very little water, and just making dots. And don't be afraid to overlap the dots. And we're gonna do this with a few other colors later on in this video. All right, then you see where we're adding the blue and then we're adding the blue for um, the headdress on the peacock and we'll come in and attach it to his head momentarily. All right, so at this point, um, basically just observe the general place where everything's going in the video. Don't be afraid to overlap stuff on yours. And if you want different colors, uh, go right ahead and add more colors into your peacock and into the flowers behind the head of the peacock. So moving into the shadows on the beak and a little bit of shadows on the side of the head, that would be the white feathers and even getting that raw sienna in the eye. Again, feel free to switch up colors and pause the video as needed. All right, here we go. Now we're going back into those feathers. So like I was saying earlier, overlap, an abundance of these lines. After I finished filming this video, I did go back to this painting and almost give it like a round two and add even more. So no matter what we get to in the end, I want you to add even more than what you see on the end of the video here to your painting at home. All right, and again, you're getting kind of close to the beak. Don't forget about that area in between uh, where that beak and the neck is and then even moving into those other feathers. And for this video, I am keeping the painting in the same orientation just because it's shooting the video. At home, if you need to turn the canvas sideways, upside down, put it on your lap, whatever, whatever you need to do to be able to make these brush strokes a little bit easier, do that. This is your creative outlet to just find what works for you. And that's really the basis of art find what works for you. All right, so going back to those feather lines with the purple. And if you happen to have even uh, multiple color brush pens, feel free to break those out and make your lines using these. Or even markers would go on top of it. So don't be afraid to even make this mixed media. All right, oh, and as you're doing these lines, remember to breathe. You're gonna to wanna to hold your breath. It is not gonna help you. It will actually make your brush uh, more shaky. So remember to exhale as you are touching the brush to the canvas. And another thing that I recommend to all my students is start getting in the habit of looking at your painting from a distance. We generally look at the entire world from about five to 10 feet away. So while you're creating something, even if it's um, a piece of furniture or landscaping. Step away from it and look at it from a distance. Change up your perspective. And while you're changing your perspective, uh, share your art with your friends. I love that adults are getting back into making handmade gifts. So um, given a lot of our extra free time these days, and the creative projects that everybody are doing, I highly recommend giving your friends handmade gifts. All right, you guys, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home, um, giving watercolors a try. Please keep painting, find monthly outlets, 
it's only going to get better from here. So keep painting. All right. So we're going to go back in, add some, a little bit more intensity. So going back into the green, if you, I, I think I decided I didn't really like the yellow in there, but if you like yours where it is, you do not have to go and add any more touches. Or if you want to add something that I do not add, please trust your instincts and add that. Um, if you really mess it up, you can always paint it again, like I've always, already recommended to do. Um, but you might even come, stumble upon another little happy accident. All right. Oh, so we're adding the shadow on the head of the peacock. And again, going back to just those little dots overlapping. And this one's kind of cool to eat, definitely take a picture beforehand and then finish this and take a picture and then swipe back and forth so you can see the difference of just what a shadow value, a darker value is going to do. Um, a lot of times in my other paintings, uh, white's our last color and it is pretty kind of cool how much of a contrast that gives when you place it next to the black um, and just how much it makes your painting pop. So get in the habit of looking at your paintings and your progress photos and noticing where you're uh, looking at something different, how much you're growing, uh, how much your skills are improving, and again, just observing. That is the biggest part of art, no matter what medium you're in, observation. All right, so just going back, I think I wanted that blue even more intense, but as you're adding more of your colors, keep a little bit of your lighter area on the right-hand side and the darker area on the left-hand side. Yeah, we'll cut that out. Great job, you guys. Thanks so much for painting with me. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the watercolor process and I hope you like how your paintings turned out. Like I said in the intro, please paint this multiple times. Each one's gonna be a little bit different, but each time you paint, you're gaining more knowledge and your muscles are remembering um, how to hold the brush, what it looks like to mix colors, um, how to kind of play with the water. So please, uh, just keep on practicing. With that being said, anything that you upload to social media, please tag me at paint with love joy or hashtag paint with love joy, or um, at the very least, please email me your photos of what you paint. Um, when I post those on social media, uh, it encourages other people to paint. And they're some of my favorite emails to receive um, uh, in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee. So let me know how you're doing. Uh, also, please leave suggestions on what you want me to create in the future. Um, I am a solo show, so it's not like I can get them done super quickly, but I do have a nice running list with some awesome subject matters that you guys have recommended. So let's keep that going. Anything else, please let me know what you're looking for in the future and I'll do my best to kind of incorporate that. Uh, but this has been a great project, the Paint with Lovejoy website. It has grown beautifully thanks to your support. So until next time, have a great day and happy painting. Cheers. Yeah.